My guest today is Dr. Steve Guthrie, professor of theology at Belmont University in Nashville. Steve is one of the most kind and interesting people I know, and we had a great time talking about creativity and theology as we drove around Nashville. Oh, that was a fail. Good thing I got that on camera. That happens to me everywhere I go. Now, are they looking for you? Should I speed up? Or what, are you, what are you doing actually, this scenario? But they, they don't know this car, right. so I should be okay. Yeah, well this, is, well, this is the cop's edition. This, uh, oh my goodness, he is behind us, actually. Yeah. All right. I'm just gonna... Yeah, just duck down. Just down a little bit and... Uh, <laughs> Me too. Awesome. Yeah, We've, we'll have... It worked. We'll have 30 minutes clear, at least. So the strategy is, Anytime you ask me a question, I don't have anything intelligent to say about it. <laughs> there you go. And go to the chips. <laughs> and we'll just yeah. we'll just cut in. We'll just voice over what I want of you. That's <laughs> right. So if you have a bad answer, I'll just narrative voice over. <laughs> Actually, this is a reference to the Kantian Ding Kong Zie. <laughs> Why? This is a very uh, siren-esque area. They're gonna they're gonna keep circling until they find me. Um, <laughs> It's okay. So as long as the chopper, the chopper is not involved, that's when we know we're in trouble. That's that's what then, this then is we for. Close right. The, but as long as there's no chopper, we can we can leave this. Oh, there we go. Yeah, again, that's um, it happens every time I leave the office. Makes sense. What was your first car? My first car? Yeah. Well, my first car wasn't my first car. It was actually, I mean, since you mentioned my dad, my dad um, had. A Chevy S10. Okay. That he got. Um, it was bright yellow with a black stripe okay. down either side, so no. it looked like a Pittsburgh Steeler truck. No, he, and, you know, he got it. He got the stripe added. For that no, no. Oh, okay. I mean, I think it was, you know, sort of custom from the shop. I mean, he ordered it that way. Okay. He, he didn't paint it on himself or anything like right, that. Right. Or, or, uh, <laughs> How'd you do it? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> with with a sharp with an artistic uh, flair. Yeah. Right. So um, and you're Pittsburgh people, right? Oh, we're Pittsburgh people. So, so that was my junior and senior year. You know, driving that around. That was. Uh, he, I felt he, pretty bad. He let you drive it. Oh yeah. Wait, yeah. wait you felt when bad. I, what do you mean? Oh no no uh, bad. It's oh. The, the, the I'll explain sense. it later. The Michael the, Jackson. It's, the, it's that. the way the kids talk these days. <laughs> I'll. Uh, but. Then I, I had um, my sophomore year in college, I guess the first car that was really mine was uh, a 1976 Monte Carlo. Okay, wow. Cur curvy. Yeah, absolutely. With a, uh, a T roof that leaked. Like, uh, I mean, it was like, like going through a, a car wash with the windows <laughs> down every time it rained. So, did you actually ever go through a car wash with it? Or is that how Just, you I did right. to test it out and make right. sure it was the same that it was. That's <laughs> exactly how it felt. Well, that's a pretty cool car, though. It was a cool car. It was sparkle blue. Wow. With a white pinstripe down the sides. Wow. And what happened to it? No, no hydraulics in it or anything right. like that. No, no, I, I sold it. So, you are obviously and have been a musician for a long time. Um, hmm. Can you explain to me what's going on in this picture? Um, like, wow. how did you guys get on? How did you get on the rocks? Did anyone have to get wet for that picture? <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. And as one is... comment on Facebook said, it looks like you just came from your law firm. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's. Cool. I mean, that's like. A, oh, I'm not judging. I'm the same. We're the same like age. A, the, the sort of baggy suit that was. Oh, I'm, we were going it. for uh, like. Morris Day and the Time. Okay. okay that's, that's the look I was going for, at least. Um, yeah, you know, the thing is, this was uh, in Ann Arbor, and there were just those rocks, actually, the kind of the, the shore or, or the uh, paved areas, yeah. kind of right there in the foreground of the picture, so we were able to get far enough out there. Right, right. Yeah, it's, it's a Nashville. Agent. So what year yes. is this? This is probably like 85, maybe, I'm guessing. No, like no, this would be Early? 94. Well, a little bit later. 93, 94. So kind of pre internet there's no internet, you know, or at least not yeah. fully. That's not the way. Yeah. And is this still an agent, you know, these people? Is I, they I don't still know. If they, so this okay. was our, our booking agent and our manager. And, yeah, they lived in Nashville. And um, so That was big time. You were in Ann Arbor. And, it was. And we, came, yeah. we would come down here and we did some... Showcases for yeah, for record companies, and we'd come down and 
talk with record companies about why they should sign us. And they'd, Different they'd, age. They'd explain to us why they weren't going to sign us, and we'd go back home, and then we'd come back down. And is that is that what it was really? I mean, that kind of. Yeah, did you do that a lot? We did that a lot. Um, and in fact, I mean, one thing that's kind of fun. So I don't know the. Yeah, this. Our artist management agency here. Their address is on 16th Avenue South. Uh -huh. So this address, this is about three quarters of a mile, a half mile from my office right Again, now at yeah, Belmont. Yeah. All right. So I, I now sit about three quarters of a mile from the spot where my journey away from music and toward theology began. Okay. I stood on the sidewalk outside our manager's office one afternoon and said to the guys in the band, okay, that's it, I quit. Really? I've had it, I'm, forget it, I'm done. And that was really it? And that was and it. And who knows, at three quarters of a mile, you'd be a theology prop right there. That and is then, a beautiful, beautiful yeah, thing. Yeah. Well, it actually, I was dying to know about the name of the band, Billy Sunday, as in the 19th century baseball player who became the famous early 20th century fundamentalist, evangelist kind of guy? Yeah, exactly. What? It, what so what were you thinking what were you thinking what was i thinking and, and here, here's the irony i don't know i know one billy sunday quote very yeah. famous one he said i know he was very anti-theological uh, i know more about theology or i'd say i know i know I, uh, now I'm, i obviously don't know well enough. <laughs> <laughs> what he, a he powerful was a, quote he was, <laughs> he was an extraordinary yeah, speaker about that? <laughs> So, yeah, he was very well known. His legend as an orator was well deserved, obviously. Yeah. No, no. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. I know as much about theology as a jackrabbit knows about ping pong. Wow. <laughs> now, you have to admit, that is a pretty powerful quote. But the point is, Billy How Sunday. How did he come up with that as an analogy? I don't know, sure. So, but Billy Sunday was not pro theology, so no. here you are. I was just thinking about the irony. You have this band named Billy Sunday, and now you're a theology prof. Is yeah, this, you know, please, some of it was, well, um, you know, arriving at band names is a, um, a funny discipline. Uh, the, the, a lot of names get batted around, and I don't know the process by which we arrived at this one. Some of it was that um, we were kind of, you know, this is sort of the early 90s when Kind of being not a Christian band, but a band of Christians uh -huh. was kind of a, a cool kind thing. Of we were kind of, right, right. we were kind of, you know, we felt like we were edgy that way. Yeah, that we yeah. were a band of Christians, but we played stuff that was sort of conceptually broadly Christian, yeah, yeah. but wasn't praise music. And we were playing secular venues and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So we kind of liked the idea of having a name that sort of yeah. had an oblique reference yeah, yeah, right. to the world of Christianity, or even the the fact that Sunday was in the name. Yeah, yeah. And I liked the fact that, um, I liked the fact that Billy Sunday was a flamboyant, theatrical totally. performer. Right, right. Who was interested in, I don't know, presenting the gospel in interesting theatrical sorts of ways. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's a name, I, well, actually, I know that it isn't a name that I would, I would settle on today. Right. But well, at okay. the time, yeah, it, yeah, no. As a 21-year-old, you know, it, it seemed like a good idea. The American philosopher John Dewey talks about art as one way in which we can encounter and, in some sense, kind of enter into another culture, mm -hmm. not just by re reading about it, but sort of in some way participating yeah. in it. And uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't grow up in the African American church. Um, I had some experiences of the African-American church sure. growing up just as a visitor, but not a lot. But somehow I felt as if, and this might be, you can get a sense of entering into another culture mm -hmm. and be mistaken. Right. But I had the sense listening to that gospel quartet music that I was encountering something of the culture in which yeah. it lived and right, I liked right. it. Um, yeah. There's something about that, that it was the voice of the church mm. and the voice of that church. Mm. And there was something about that church that I found really appealing and engaging yeah, and wonderful. Yeah. 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 If you would choose a number for me from, let's see, I gotta make sure I got my, get, a chip, get your chip ready. Yeah. Uh, a number between one, number one, and 209. Mm. 22. 22, okay. 
So if you wouldn't mind turning to page 22 of this book and mm. read, read the first paragraph that you're So eyes. good. The chips or the book? The chips. <laughs> uh, here we go. I'm ready. It's page 22. Oh, no. OK, so it's you turn true. the next page. How about that? Is that intentional? <laughs> no. So there we go. 21. What did you I choose? I got a 21. All right, 21 it is. Some of the artists and authors we've surveyed have insisted that God and spirituality cannot be defined nor contained and analyzed by rational formulations. But we should notice at once that it is precisely impersonal things, like forces, energies, and so on, that can be quantified, defined, and plotted out mathematically. We can articulate rules and generalizations and principles when we speak of a force. We can apply the principles of gravity, <laughs> electromagnetism, weak and strong nuclear force. It is when we enter the realm of personhood that we move outside of definitions and enter into mystery. It is precisely because the Holy Spirit is person and not force that we cannot box him into doctrinal formulations. It is because he is a person that he is mysterious. OK. Mm. Oh, that's good. Wow. No, don't. Uh, obviously, one paragraph out of a book is not Now, that was my best stuff that, right there. That, I mean, that's, that's all you got. It's the, all downhill. The rest of it was padding. It was fluff. No. It was that paragraph no, no, that no, I wanted no, to publish. But can you say something about that paragraph? I want to talk Absolutely. more about the whole book. So, what do you, I mean, there must be something in there that is certainly yeah, important to one, say. Um, Sorry, I didn't one way very... of thinking about the book is uh, that it's answering the question, what's so spiritual about the arts? Yeah, OK. Um, which a n number of people, as far back as Pythagoras, you know, have suggested that there's something spiritual about yeah. music or something spiritual about artistic experience. <clears throat> and there are different ways of answering that question, mm -hmm. what's spiritual about the arts? One and each chapter looks at a different way of answering that question mm. um, and finds some things to agree with and some things mm -hmm. to disagree with. One answer to that question is that art is spiritual because both art and spirituality move us beyond the realm of the rational, mm. of the discursive. They move us out of the realm of concepts and languages into the area of mystery. Transcendence, that which the, into the realm of the ineffable. It's not just quantifiable, and that's what that's getting at. Mystery mm -hmm. and knowledge are not antonyms, but right. they exist in kind of a, yeah. a dialogical right. relationship. Something that you just don't know isn't mysterious. You just don't mm -hmm. know it. Mm -hmm. But knowing some things and wanting to know more mm. is mystery. I, I read the book this week, and I don't know why I didn't read it before. I had dipped We've been into praying it. for it. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Finally happened. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I love you anyways and count you as a person I admire and as a friend, but that's not what's leading me to say that book, this book really blew me away. When I read thank this, you. I thought, this is what theology can and should be. It's constructive, wow. it's beautiful, it's nuanced, it's dialogical, and it's deeply orthodox too. Huh. I mean, I wrote a friend of mine and said, um, you know, Guthrie moves between Coltrane, Plato, Athanasius, Schleiermacher, Eddie Van Halen. It's all in there. And it's all very, but it's all, it's what I would want to be as a theologian and scholar as well. Again, it's constructive. You're, I like to think of it as like, you're, you're glad to gather lumber from any, any place mm. to help build something beautiful and mm. Christian. Um, and uh, I just learned so much from it, thought it was such a great piece of work. And um, one of the things that really struck me was how and when did you get connected to Athanasius? I mean, of all yeah. people, and how did that happen? Obviously, he's a big influence on what you're doing there, yeah. I think. Well, thank you so much for that. Um, I, I feel like I should just step out of the car now. Okay, just... Really, cause, <laughs> And anything I say is going to be a disappointment. <laughs> okay, well, that we'll just cut it off after this. That's right. If you, could, if you say anything stupid, right. we'll just edit that out. <laughs> if, yeah. Um, <laughs> this book came out of a class that I co-taught with uh, Jeremy Bentley yeah, yeah. at St. Andrews. Yeah. And 
with some um, beautiful people I saw in there, you know, Jen Kilps and oh, Stearns yeah. and all these oh, guys. Oh, these are wonderful people. Yeah. It was wonderful. The only thing that was, was not so wonderful was, you know, Jeremy Begbie, I don't, you know, some of your viewers will right. doubtless know his name. He's this eminent professor now at Duke who splits yeah. his time between Duke and Cambridge. Right. At that point, he was splitting his time between Duke and St. Andrews. Right, so right. like one week, or rather between St. Andrews, Andrews and Cambridge. And Cambridge. Right, yeah. So one week, it would be Jeremy Begbie, and then the next week, I'd have to step in. Right. You know? So I got used to seeing kind of the light drain out of the students' eyes when they realized, oh, it's a Steve week. I'm sure it's instead not that of a bad. Jeremy You were already done with your PhD at that point yeah. when we were teaching there, right? Yeah. Um, but it was a wonderful experience, and um, and we one of the texts for the course was um, was Athanasius's letters to Serapion, okay, um, which is the uh, one of the works in which he most explicitly articulates a theology of the spirit. Developing that course into this book, I revisited that essay and then tried to read a bit more okay. in Athanasius. And one of the things that I was uh, really captivated by was um, Athanasius's idea of well, what Torrance calls kind of the vicarious humanity of Christ, mm. mm -hmm. that Jesus coming as the second Adam, yeah, yeah. as Jesus as... Makes us more human, or makes us really yeah. human. Yeah, right. Jesus as the the same word by which God creates mm. um, and by which God now recreates. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And, um, and then some of his, his more mature work and his letters to Serapion make clear the role of the spirit in that. Um, I see, right. Not so much at the beginning, I gather, from what you're saying, but later his works. That's right. Well, and I mean, some of the stuff like on the incarnation really because it's written against Arius and it's written to defend mm -hmm. yes. um, the deity of Christ, That's what the it emphasis is, really right? is, is on the Son. Right, right. But then he uh, expands that and recognizes the, the, the right. crucial role of the Spirit in the remaking mm -hmm. of our humanity. Right, right. The book's right. argument is that the Holy Spirit is the humanizing Spirit. Mm -hmm. The idea that the goal of, spirit, of the spiritual life is to kind of escape or um, right. diminish or to uh, be delivered from our humanity. Right, right. So that seems... And <clears throat> particularly the idea that the, um, that the role of the spirit... So again, spiritual and human, for many of them, I think, are kind of right. roughly yeah. antonymic. Right, right. You know, that, um, you know so you have... Um, you know, Genesis 2, it's by the breath of God that the dust of the ground becomes human. Mm. And then throughout the Old Testament, there is this relationship of dependence between breath and dust, mm. right? So the, Psalm 104, if he were to withdraw his ruach, they would die and return to dust. When he sends forth his mm. ruach, they are mm. created. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and Psalm 104 plays a big part in your argument, I think, especially near the end, right? Yeah. Um, and then, of course, how is it that the Word is made flesh? You know, the, yeah. the, the creeds say, you know, in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hmm. So it's by the work of the Spirit. And then, of course, we acknowledge Jesus as the Christ, which is to say that He is... The, the, the one anointed, anointed one. right by the spirit yeah. even in his last name right Jesus Christ. right there <laughs> no but that so, is good I, I have to admit i've never so, I connected anointed with spirit and that and, but obviously that's how the whole story of Jesus begins with his baptism by the spirit right right, right. right there, and so the that's very beginning right it's by the spirit that he is the true human right right and then the work of the spirit in us and then so at the end of john's gospel you know he breathes on his disciples yeah, yeah. and says receive right, the right. holy spirit right right and then by the same spirit that inhabits jesus we are remade um not after oh, well we are remade after the perfect humanity of jesus our humanity yeah. is refashioned yeah, yeah. after yeah, the pattern beautiful. of his that's good yeah, so that. in creation and incarnation and in redemption the Holy Spirit humanizes. Yeah.
I love it. Yeah. I mentioned Jeremy Begbie um, a few minutes ago, and he has a distinction that he makes between um, kind of theology of the arts and theology through the arts. Mm. So, you know, a theology of the arts would be to reflect in a Christian way upon yeah. practices of singing or dancing yeah. or painting or, or whatever. Or what beauty is even or right. something, right? <clears throat> Whereas what he wants to engage in particularly is theology through the arts, which is um, allowing painting and music and drama to bear their own sort of distinctive yeah. witness. Yeah, yeah. It's a good way to say it. You know who's really wonderful huh. on this is, um, is Miroslav Volf, hmm. a book called Free of Charge, hmm. Giving and Forgiving in a World Stripped of Grace. It's a wonderful book. He talks about how God gives in order to make us givers. Hmm. That God doesn't give in order to make us passive. That would hmm. be to make us unlike God. Hmm. If right, we're right. to be made like God, yeah, totally. then the intention is that we would also be able to contribute something, that we be would have a voice to add. In Tolkien's yeah. language, right? Yeah. yeah. What I found striking about both the kind of the ancient account and the more modern account of creativity is that they both have this competitive vision. Hmm. And you think, what does, what does the Hamausias show us? But that, so that Jesus is fully God and fully human. Um, on the one hand, uh, we want to say that Jesus is fully God so that when we look at Jesus, we know what God is like and that Jesus is truly human so that when we look at Jesus, we know what humanity is to be. Mm. But the other thing that we see is what it looks like when God and humanity come together perfectly. Mm. Mm. Right? That's good. So that, that without, That's good. Yeah. without confusion, without separation, yeah, yeah. all of that tells us that for God to be fully present, the human does not have to be absent. Mm. And for the human mm. voice to sound does not mean that God has to be silenced. Yeah. Um, that's rich. Yeah. So that, you know, and then of course that's a reflection of the Trinitarian life as yeah. well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. That, um, you know, the Father's full presence doesn't abrogate the yeah. reality of the Spirit yeah. or, the, or the Son. Yeah. And so it, it welcomes us into this way of thinking about creativity and artistry yeah. where we can acknowledge that God's voice sounds in some way through this, that culture's voice sounds through this, and the artist's voice mm -hmm. sounds through this. If you look in the, the door there, you will see uh, some surprise? envelopes. Oh. Yeah. Wow. And that's your honorarium. Just kidding. Oh, There's fantastic. no money in there. No. <laughs> the chips is your honorarium, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, you choose any color you want. Oh and there's goodness. a random question there. I have no idea what's in there either. Wow. And, so exciting. And I, you, so choose wisely. Okay. But I will also commit to answering these. So you have to answer the question, and then I will, okay. you get to answer the question. I okay. will also commit to answering it as well. All right. Do you have a favorite T-shirt? If so, what's on it, and what does it say? Why is it important? That's a good question. I like that one. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. Okay, well. I have uh, ACDC Highway to Hell. Original? Uh, no, it's not, sadly. Um, but I, I, I typically wear that kind of two or three times a semester Do you? to, to lecture glass? in, yeah. <laughs> Once I've kind of lulled them to sleep with a, a right, more right. kind of orthodox and Henley cut, yeah, a Henley right. cut, you know, then, then I then I slip in just, the. Do you tie it to certain to lectures or is right just eschatology? Totally so when we yeah okay. when, when we get to kind of the last things you know right we, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no there's no coordination there no theological coordination like there a writer sure. yeah make a right okay. here, but um, Good. okay. I don't know. This, I mean, in some ways it's embarrassing to answer that because it is, some of it's a point of vanity, some of it's a middle age, you know, kind of midlife crisis thing. You know, I haven't gone out and bought this slick little car like you have. It's 14 years old, just the record. It cost almost so, nothing. Okay. So this is a poor man's yeah. midlife crisis. Don't try and justify yourself right. to me, Jonathan. <laughs> Tell it to the missionaries who could lose this money. Um, so, 
Um, if they could drive a stick, they could. <laughs> They're welcome to it. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I, I don't know. I spent the first kind of 28 years of my life thinking that I was going to be playing in a rock band mm. for a living. Mm. And um, theology is a love, but it's kind of a second love. It still mm. hurts, you know, kind of mm. When you see the picture of that girl that you broke up with in high school, you know, you, you love your wife now. Actually, maybe this is a... <laughs> we'll cut this out. <laughs> that's a dangerous that's analogy. That's for sure staying in. We're, that's, we're cutting everything else out. That's, it. that's all I was looking for, that one moment. So, got it. Gotcha. But, you know, it's, you still think, oh, man. And, and actually, I'm not in a band right now. It was the first time yeah. since I was 11. That wow, was is this it, the first time? Yeah. Wow. That, wow been in a band so is it, it are you aware of it emotionally or yeah yeah, yeah. Right. honestly so I know it doesn't mean anything to them in fact I was talking about one of my bands um, a couple of years ago when I was playing more and showed these kids keep going straight they showed the kids in one of my classes a video that this band had just made thought it was pretty cool class ended and they were walking out and I saw heard one of the students um, out in the hallway, seeing another student hadn't been in class, said, "Oh, you'll never guess what, Dr. Guthrie's in a dad band." <laughs> oh, man, that hurts. Oh my goodness. Dr. Oh. Guthrie plays dad rock. Oh, oh my man. goodness, that so, wasn't what you were going for. That's right. And so I, I was recognize. This the, uh, was this the Boston? Yeah, yeah. I recognize. That was a cool video. Yeah. Of course, I guess I'm old too, and I thought it was cool. Yeah, come on. I guess on. I could see that they would see. It. In fact, I think that was actually my kid's reaction to it too, not to add insult to Thank you. Thanks no, for that. I loved it though. Yeah. For what it's worth. Yeah, the dads so. loved it. So, but it's your turn, right? So. What was the question? Do you have a that was favorite... such a long-winded answer? I forgot the question. Sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. That got so existential and deep and personal, man. I just wanted a t-shirt answer. Yeah, right. Sorry. Do you have a favorite t-shirt? If so, what's on it and what does it say? Why is it important? That why is it important? You're pushing toward the existential. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Um, I really like um, funny, ironic shirts. So I have quite a few of them. Yeah. Like Department of Redundancy Department. <laughs> That's one of my, I have a shirt that says that. I don't get it. Uh, pray about it. <laughs> and I and if I had some, I don't have any shirts that have this, but one of my favorite things in life are palindromes. Yeah. You know, words or sentences that spell themselves backwards. Like, uh, you know, rise to vote, sir, or a man, a plan, a canal, Panama. You know, these kind of things that spell themselves backwards. So I, I would take, take your a shirt. word for it on those. Yeah. yeah. Pray about that. That's yeah, awesome. That's if, I could, if I had my dry erase board with yeah. me, I'd write it out here for it. <laughs> or go hang a salami, I'm a lasagna hog. That spells itself backwards. You know, Unbelievable. That's, it's, it'll touch you deeply, deeply, man. Yeah. So if I had a t-shirt, like if you wanted to get me a t-shirt, for example, for Christmas or mm -hmm. something, if you, something like that. It's like you read my mind. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, it has been a total delight. Yeah, you're just saying that. I mean, I do say that to everybody. Yeah, okay. But in your case, I really mean it. <laughs> I've enjoyed it too. It's been fun. The key to sincerity key to life is sincerity and once you can fake that you're good to go right as they say um, well you know the number of times that somebody asks me questions about me and then and listens to the answer it's narcissist vanishingly small so this, this is wonderful i understand narcissist coffee and theology that's what the show is called <laughs> come talk <laughs> from about one you. narcissist to another <laughs> so yeah. yeah no you are a beautiful person it yeah. has been um a delight to be with you today. I appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. I've enjoyed it a lot. It's All been right, really man. fun. Thanks. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Three really quick things. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and connect with us on social media. We'd really appreciate it. Secondly, check out the comments section below. We've put a bunch of program notes and links to interesting things there. And third, check out some of our episodes you can see linked here. Thanks. We'll see you on the road. Peace.